Um, so let's like start chatting about finding creativity in the age of Gen AI. Um, and just to let everyone know, uh, I'll be sharing some of my struggles slash insights as a creator. Uh, and while working with generative AI and AI technology in some of the stuff that I do, which is both video as well as design related. Uh, as mentioned, I work for a company called Creative 111 that does video tutorials. I also am um, the director of marketing at a company called Boris FX. We make plugins uh, for all types of video editing software and are kind of creatively try to design uh, plugins for uh, the photography, video editing, and motion graphic market. Um, the insights I'll be sharing with you today, there's like no particular order towards them. Uh, some of these just deal with creativity in general, which I think are applicable to, you know, looking at creativity in this age, not to mention just uh, how it might relate to Gen AI. And hopefully this provokes a discussion at the end of this and leaves you with a few things to think about um, as we head forward here on this topic. My wish is for each of you to walk away with one or two things that you've learned from this session and can either apply um, and use in your own creative work. So if this sounds good, you're in the right session. If not, I have no offense if you have to go somewhere else. I thought it would be um, important. I want to define uncertainty because I think there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to AI and Gen AI and how that might be viewed in terms of the overall job market. So let's define uncertainty as like the quality or state of being uncertain or doubt. Uh, looking towards another uh, definition, it's kind of a situation that we do not yet know. And there's a lot of predictions about AI and Gen AI. However, there's it moves so quickly. It's being implemented so uh, as well fast in terms of our workflow, sometimes hard to keep up. And with that is a lot of uncertainty. Now, I just read this recent um, note from Indeed, which is that generative AI uh, will no doubt, so speaking of doubt and uncertainty, they're saying no doubt it's going to affect all jobs, indeed, uh, the market says. And just to preface this, uh, when they said this on September 21st, they're saying skills from every single job can now be done or augmented by generative AI, and that we'll start to see them become affected in this way. Uh, that in itself just presents a whole amount of uncertainty. And I think to some degree could also affect our own creative processes. So um, chatting about this first, um, this is like my first little point about generative AI is that Gen AI and AI are moving extremely fast but this doesn't mean that we have to move fast. I just took part in an AI um, machine learning conference about two weeks ago. And every single one of the instructors there on a panel mentioned that they are exhausted teaching this stuff, let alone someone uh, from a perspective of learning this stuff. If the trainers and the people creating this technology are tired, uh, obviously, I would say that there is an element to it not all being absorbed of how it's going to be useful. I also say that just because something is being created quickly uh, from a technology perspective doesn't mean that we have to react and move as quickly. In fact, a lot of the stuff that I see produced in a Gen AI base, if we're talking about, let's say, text to still generation, is still in the ver uh, very early ad um, adventation stages, uh, even more so with video. So one thing to do with any creative process uh, that has been beneficial to me is to slow things down. Um, we don't have to be tethered to our phones. Uh, I think it's important though to be involved in the conversation. I also think it's important to take a step back from technology and see what parts of it after you understand it could be useful for your workflow and benefit you um, and not necessarily feel like you have to catch up because I can't even catch up. I also consider creativity in general to be a marathon and not a sprint. You know, this is something that you are going to apply over and over again across multiple years, if not decades. And keeping that in mind, 
part of the creative process, I think, is to find something um, that you, to action, but even more importantly, something that you can action continuously. Uh, so that is finding something where you can take small maintainable actions that will then compound themselves over time. A lot of times when you might look at a big project or at the pace of technology is, is moving, that could feel overwhelming. The plan is to find small chunks that you can um, learn in, not to mention um, maintain and keep on maintaining it so that it then becomes compounded and becomes to your advantage. Uh, to give you an example here of a marathon, I'll remember my first time presenting and putting together a deck of slides. This took me probably, it was a 50 minute talk, it took me two months to put together these slots. And if I did the same topic today, this would probably take me two or three days. And that's because I've presented so much and gone through that working process and now have these small maintainable um, actions that I have in place that help get the job done faster and more efficiently. I think the same is true here when we think about creativity next to Gen AI is as we learn about this and how it could be helpful to our work, not to mention not helpful to our work, take it in stride. I always like to mention, just in general, when we talk about creativity and finding creativity in any age, it's really important to look at the highest level of that. And that is, well, how creative are you? Or how creative do you consider yourself to be? Seldom, I think, in the process of work, um, not to mention uh, in the process of our own creativity, do we take a step back and say, Oh, how creative do I consider myself? Like, what am I doing to, uh, that as an action that I consider creative in the first place? Well, I'd usually take a moment to pause right now uh, in past presentations uh, for this checkup. I would recommend just taking a screenshot right now that this resource of, of questions actually uh, was formed with the help of David Usher, who has a book called Let the Elephants Run, which is all about creativity. And his whole idea was like, let's talk about a creative checkup. I took this, uh, ran with it, and then added some questions of my own that I check in on, on a pretty much a bi-weekly basis. And that's just, well, how creative are you? So on a scale of one to 10, how creative are you now? And measure that, consider yourself as an eight or nine-year-old child. Like how creative were you then? Then... There are some other questions that talk about things that I consider to be creative, like writing and drawing and reading and blogging. What type of creative actions are you doing currently in your own field of work? Um, not to mention just on a personal level. So if everyone wants to kind of take a screenshot of this right now, and since I do want to pause for about 30 seconds, I do want everyone to sort of approach maybe two or three of these questions that you see. And if you found something beneficial right now, please feel free to mention in the chat and, and if this provoked something inside of you. Let's uh, move on to a couple more points here. I think it's important when we look at AI and Gen AI is to come from a perspective to understand some of its capabilities and Think about how it might be able to assist us in our creativity um, creatively and through ideation. Now, I'm going to give a few examples of how I use it and have used it. Uh, we'll specifically do the Gen AI right now, but we can also talk about AI. Um, primarily, for me, this comes in the form of text-to-image creation. Uh, as a tool, I primarily use MidJourney. Uh, this is one of several Gen AI apps that you can use. And I find myself using it in a way where I more than likely in most cases, I don't actually take the images that are produced at face value. So as someone who works with video and motion graphics, I'll use MidJourney to create very generic type images like textures, 
um, that then get overlaid on top of video, little particles or, um, that I then plug into a specific effect. And then I combine that um, in the creation on top of a video, or let's say in the creation of a, um, a lower third motion graphic. Another use case I could do, I just actually did all this um, video work, not to mention motion graphics for a show here in Toronto, where I'm just outside of it, about an hour away. And I did uh, what is known as a VOG or voice of God, where they had asked me just to, to ask people to come into their seats before the show. Recently, I've used a service, it's called Eleven Labs. And what you can do is you can give it four hours of your own voice and it will clone your voice for you. The voice clone is somewhat accurate and a little bit scary in some degrees, but as uh, someone who creates content, um, as well as kind of visualizes what you can do with that content, uh, two things really uh, struck a chord with me, my own creativity. One was uh, earlier this year, I lost my voice for a span of three weeks. Uh, I couldn't speak, uh, which is, a really, you know, hurtful thing when you're trying to present live, not to mention create video content for online. And I've recently started using Eleven Labs for pickups. So if I mispronounce something, or if uh, someone who's looking at my content wants to um, ask me to redo a certain section or sentence, I've typed into a computer uh, what I'd like it to say, and then it would essentially create or say that line and save me time in the overall creative process. So not so much as a creative tool, but something that just helps with my productivity in getting a final product out. The thing that really blew my mind is now with 11 Labs, I speak fluent French. I don't speak French, I should as a Canadian, but uh, it will take my voice and allow me to speak French by simply typing it into 11 Labs. And then I have now, um, a transcription that I can use. I just think to myself, like in the world of, uh, if you're in feature film and have ever watched a film with audio dubbing, usually there might be a disconnect from if you already know the original actor's voice. So now picture Morgan Freeman um, or actors, which I think will come speaking in all of these languages, but in the presence of their own voice. I think that um, to be a very useful thing although there is a lot of controversy beyond that, uh, as in two useful things uh, that I use in my own workflow, these this Gen AI content. Again, I, I've seen a lot of examples of, of this in other ways, but as a piece to an overall story or puzzle, I think Gen AI has a place in AI in terms of productivity and using or learning some of these tools and how they might assist you with your work can be very helpful. Um, one other note on this is I have used uh, AI in general, chat GPT to help me ideate when I have been stuck on ideas. And if you know how to um, talk to chat GPT, it is pretty incredible some of the information that it will give you. Uh, there's a course on LinkedIn learning uh, by an author, his name is David Burse. Uh, I will try to get the name of these courses but he just sort of talks about how you can have a dialogue with ChatGPT to potentially get the result that you're looking for. Now, I want to preface this by saying I have never taken anything from ChatGPT and used it just as is. I've always taken it, uh, in some cases, completely reconstructed it. In some cases, just taken a sentence that has brought new life into something that I've already written. Uh, so there are very seldom moments where I'm taking AI out of the box and using it as it is. I, but in terms of giving me new ideas or helping me ideate, it is a completely cool and new way to experience things through my own personal experience. Um, I've done this a few times where I've asked it just to ideate the idea for a name of a title for a catchy YouTube video. So I have my own five ideas and I say, what do you think of these? It will give me feedback on that. And I say, we'll come up with a hundred more uh, based on the description that I filled out and it will, and usually it ends up being a blend of those titles. And every once in a while, it's gotten a title way better than I would have ever imagined, um, which is, I think, kind of cool. So 
I think in thinking about what tools are available to you can help with your workflow uh, when it comes to Gen AI. And how this might be able to help with your workflow and assist with your creativity. In an age where content or more content is needed, at least that is the premise, you need YouTube content, Instagram, LinkedIn, there are a number of ways of automating your process. And I do consider both Gen AI and AI tools to allow you to assist and become more productive if you understand them and use them. In Just general... Me. Sorry to interrupt you. Just uh, to let you know that we have still 10 minutes uh, to the end of the session. Cool. No problem. Thank you for letting me know. And um, I just have a few more points to cover just before the end. In no problem. General, we are going to still have a bit of um, time as we, we're going for a yes. break. So don't worry. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So I, um, on another point, um, I think it's important to give yourself time to be creative. And this, the room for creativity in the world of Gen AI is also is extremely important. Information with technology is coming in at us very fast. And it, as creators, it's important for us to carve out what is important um, for wherever we, we would like to progress to. So when I consider room, I say, I'm going to start off by saying room equals time, giving yourself time and devotion towards your creative acts. And this could be as easy as just allowing yourself to get close to the work um, in moments where you're not feeling so motivated to do it. But again, going back to that form of consistency of going back where you do little bits every single day. I think time means um, finding the best creative hours of when you work. Uh, for me, this is in the morning. For some people, it's at night. I will find out that if I start work in the morning between the hours of 6 and 11, I will get quadruple what I can get done after 5 p.m. No joke. So that ends up just be, um, if I can find those hours and carve out those hours of when to work, this is going to help um, exceed the uh, creative acts that I put out. I think uh, when we talk about room, I always love to talk about reactionary workflows as well. And I refer to a reactionary workflow as a moment where stress and anxiety starts to feed into the creative process or act. This can be a number of different things. This could be someone that you have to submit your work to who you don't get along with. This could be, oh, wait, my project um, is due yesterday. A common phrase in video editing. Um, anything that could provoke these feelings of anxiety or um, stress can cause um, you to lose focus on, on that work. So finding things that you can do to try to avoid these workflows I think are super important. And usually our intuition goes against what we should be doing. For example, uh, in my younger years, my reaction towards when I was stressed was to work harder and work till 2 a.m. in the morning. Recently, I've discovered that while I still have to get stuff done, by simply prioritizing a few main things, breaking away from the computer and coming back to it, I am double, if not triple, as productive and I still get something done that would be equally, if not better, like as uh, equally as good as the stuff that I spent two days worrying about and not getting any sleep from, not to mention just affecting my overall um, personal health and well being. I think uh, room also means finding a safe place to fail and to learn. So if you um, feel threatened by Gen AI and AI, is to learn about these tools and figure out. Um, how people are using them for both good and for bad. And if you're open to it, finding a safe place to practice with these tools and figure out where they are in your workflow. But just in general, like finding a, a, a safe place to learn uh, through this process. I think one of the great things about Instagram is that a lot of people who do share tons of content in some cases will not share um, what would then be like considered a complete work, but their process as they're ideating. And there's value in that, like for people like you to share what people you're learning along the way as you construct larger projects. 
And it also serves as a place where you can have people, um, you can test out ideas on people and see what is valuable to them. Um, I think at this point at 326, I have a couple more slides uh, in keeping in mind reactionary workflows. I, you know, I am the biggest self-critic out there and most people are their own biggest critics. So something to keep in mind in terms of the review process. And um, as a final note, just developing techniques to fight your own resistance when it comes to work. So at this point at 326, I want to just open up the floor uh, for those of you who are tuning in. Did you guys find something valuable in this session? And did you have anything that you would like to offer? Thank you, Nick. Thank you for, for sharing this. This AI generation, so it's so um, expensive in certain way. And then when you start talking about that, it's just like, especially for creatives, um, I think there is so, so much space for um conversation right um what you said about um using ai for good yeah. for bad um just came to me now what um deepak chopra was talking about that um and i had a i had an interview from a uh, university student um because i was working for a company that uses ai to look yeah. for materials and I am a I am a photographer now, but I was in interior design, my background. Um, and he wanted to know what it was, uh, what I was thinking that AI would just remove um, because of the mid journey, especially that people yeah. could just end uh, the the profession of interior designers. And I said, okay, if Deepak Chopra could find himself as like he's super spiritual right i could never imagine him um going through this kind of subject yeah um and my opinion was that i think it's gonna everybody's gonna have his space in the market um somehow and everyone is gonna try to find their space mm -hmm. so i want to know a bit of, uh, about your opinion about that um about the future in terms of uh ai being inserted on inside our environment work environment um and in the creative space i it's such a great question um i am still mostly of the philosophy that this is going to serve as an assisting tool to us to help us create better story in the long story of creativity. Um, and I agree with you to hear, it's not gonna take away imagination either. I think it's moving very quickly and people are, when they see that quick and rapid pace, it could be stressful um, and anxiety driven mm -hmm. and ridden. But I, in larger form projects, I'm just gonna let you know, I would never trust Gen AI by itself at, at this moment. Uh, I still see it as the tool for assist and I see it actually helping us create more content, whether that's needed or not is another other story, but I do see, I see it helping people create more content. And I also think that it's going to be a massive disruptor where in some cases, large corporations could be challenged with mid-tier companies who can work with less people and create equally as much. Uh, so I see it to be a disruptor, but I see that disruption taking several years, if not decades to ripple its way through the system. Um, I've always been someone like from a personal level who has had their worst work disrupted to them for some degree. Uh, so I, I wanna preface this by saying the first time when I was 20, I grabbed this Mac G4. It was under a gigabyte of RAM you know, and I, I used to think it was a spaceship. This was right after university. I'm like, this is going to get me through video editing and everything like that. Three years later, I had to upgrade a computer. Now we're on, you know, upgrades all the time. Things are constantly shifting. Uh, this is uh, definitely shifting quicker more than other things. But I think that there is still time that is going to be needed based on systems um, and how 
like governments as well as large corporations are structured for it to actually filter its way into how it's going to show up in the workforce. Um, I think that this most disruptive form of Gen AI, uh, before I get into the positive, are low-level tasks. Um, for a number of years, there have been services like Fiverr, where it's challenge how much you would pay mm -hmm. to purchase something. I'm going to say that people who are using Fiverr services in a lot of times when they're hiring people aren't looking for value. They're looking for something cheap and cheerful. You know, that's just what attracts them to that site. I think that that type of work is going to be affected the most where you'll have someone who is looking to save money and will potentially just use these tools on his own to get what he likes, whether that's going to end up giving him a very great creative um, piece of work is another story. But I think that that type of work is going to be under the most amount of threat. When you talk about larger projects like books and film and video um, and larger design projects, I see those getting more elaborate and actually us raising the bar creatively because in some cases we can use these to automate pieces of work. I also think in some ways that that's gonna allow um, individuals to become more creatively free because they have more tools at their disposal. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think overall, like there are so many benefits to that. Um, but I also think that there needs to be lots of discussion about this as well. You know, coming into a new election uh, and and how this stuff could be used by what people call as back, bad actors, you know, there are definitely threats that need to be chatted about. Um, but this um, I, I think Tahira said it perfectly, is not meant for us to, it's not going to take away our imagination. And in some cases it's limited, you know, it's not, um, it's not thinking by itself, if that makes any sense. So it's trained on a bunch of data in the past. And that in itself, I would say is at a creative deficit. The one thing that all of us humans have that AI doesn't is that we have eyes in the present and can see changing um, elements much faster than it can, as much as it seems like it is faster in terms of its um, um, compilation and creation of things. We are the ones who are more at least tuned in to the present and potentially what is going to happen in the future. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you oh, so thank much. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah. if he wants to ask Nick anything, Tahira... Christina. No. All right. So um, I think I can well, come you. to the end of this session. But Nick, you can just share with us where we can we can find you, your socials. Uh, just yes. before I, I finish this session. So oh yes, awesome. Yeah. So go. I'm gonna put this in the thread, but you can um on Instagram, I'm at Nick Haraz. I talk a lot about creativity on that channel. Um, so I reserve it for uh, talks about creativity and little um, tips and tricks. I'm also quite, um, I, I'm on LinkedIn quite a bit. I have some courses on there. So that's another great place to reach out to me. And if you guys are here at the Creativity Conference, I have a talk again, I think at 5.30 today, uh, but this time on imposter syndrome and something that I dealt with uh, sort of growing up through the speaker circuit. Um, and then I'm going to be part of a panel tomorrow on AI which I think will be also really valuable to the community and stuff. Great. I just yeah. saw that Tahira said something. Uh, AI won't take away imagination. It yeah. Might. Yeah. And yeah, it can't replicate our connections. And at the same, it's so, uh, so great that you said that because at the same time that we see this big push for AI and Gen AI, you're seeing an equal push for live experiences in the creative market. Mm -hmm. Um, people wanting to, to to be more connected to people at concerts, at live events. Uh, there's a resurgence of that in some way, um, which is equally as exciting, you know, and you need a lot of human, human uh, people yeah. to, to make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Both in people wanting to attend and then as well as people behind the scenes. Yeah. 